Good morning. So uh, could we show some hands and see uh, which industry you guys from, say, let's see, government transportation? OK, three. And how about oil and gas? Couple. And rail, railroad? OK. Good. Uh, certainly, we have some consultant maybe covering many uh, you know, very first aspect of that. Okay, and briefly, myself has been in uh, doing transportation in particular for about 20 years, uh, over, 20, over 20 years, and uh, my dissertation was in temporal LRS, and uh, some of the concepts of that was adopted in the ISO standard, GIS LRS standards 19148. Um, so that's one of my career's highlights, I would say. So um, I would think being a LRS professional, we always have a feeling that LR LRS is kind of like a stepchild in the, in the uh, GIS world. And certainly ASRI's support dates back to late 1990s. Uh, I think 6160, ArcInfo, started supporting LRS. And, but the support is not quite as strong. And even today, especially for those in the government, uh, roads and highway being a enterprise LRS engine, you still have many, many issues unresolved. And on the transportation side in particular, because in, in the US in particular, I would say because FHWA has the push from the HPMS program, you know, pushing in this direction for many years. And in the last five years, in fact, local agencies, the state agencies are mandated to essentially adopting LRS structure uh, as a reporting tool. And the funding is associated with their performance measurements, which is based upon LRS, so it's quite significant in the United States. And LRS support in SAFE, I would think, uh, came about um, six years ago, 20, uh, 2011 version, I would think, and there is still, it's still quite, quite difficult to do some of the things. Uh, essentially, there are tools for us to talk you know, put them together. Today I want to show, I want to, you know, share our experience of doing some of which. And my focus would be, in fact, be, uh, we talk about the LRS challenges, why it is challenging, and FME for LRS. Then I will be focusing specifically on LRS events operations. Okay. So, um, FHWA sponsored a Arnold study almost three years ago now. That time flies. And essentially, saying uh, complex, complex, it's difficult to do it. And um, let's uh, see what is what makes it different from other systems. Okay, and at an architecture level, you have LRS. I say LRS as system. What I call it essentially infrastructure level. You have the route network in infrastructure. Then on top of that, you have the linear referencing methods. And you know, my point, reference offset, reference post offset, or something like that. And then another layer are the events layer. Okay. And so this is a overall architecture of linear referencing system. There's the separation of layer, between layers, because one layer would be pure crashes, right? The other layer is pure payment condition. The two, they are stored separately. And another layer, of course, is infrastructure and events are separated. They're associated with methods. Put them all together, link them together. And the advantage is, of course, each and every data set can be maintained and managed by different agencies, different groups, dif departments. And like GIS, we'll maintain, mainly focus on the infrastructure, making sure all the center lines and all measurements, you know. Yeah, I think that's an advantage. 
So the challenge, as you would say, LR seems to be quite simple. The concept is simple, clean, beautiful. And um, data structure is not that complicated at all. Think about crash data, OK. You have the key. You have this description of locations, on route, measurements, at measurements, then just maybe 20, 30, 50 different attributes associated with crash events. And any other events, pavement for that matter, conditions or shoulder condition, essentially the same. So uh, the data volume is not large, you know. Uh, DOT will say, hey, we have lots of records, millions of records, but that in today's you know, world compared with typical operation is just, yeah, it's not, not much. You, know. you cannot compare with the dynamic nature of stock exchange data, for, for example. You know. And how about, um, and data is not as dynamic. Certainly you would say ITIS, data is dynamic, but for the most part, the most important infrastructure, the DOT, or railroad or pipeline is more or less static. You know, there are changes, we need to manage it. So why is it so difficult? Huh? Maybe data silo, yes. Crash is usually maintained by safety group. Tra traffic data is maintained by the, uh, the uh, traffic group, typically operations. Then pavement condition is by the other groups, yes, and GIS handles uh, the infrastructure. That's, well, that's typical, you know. And s spatial, spatial nature of data, well, uh, I don't think that's any more difficult uh, because spatial technology itself has evolved over the years. It's, it's a commodity technology already. Um, maybe the dependencies, think about it. Why does it make it so difficult? And I think it's the sad. It's really the separation anxiety disorder that's making sense. And this one I alluded to, essentially event layer and LRS networks being separated, and event layers, between layers being separated. And this makes it so difficult. Essentially, we're trading the beautiful, simple architecture with the operational difficulties, and which later we'll see. Yeah. Now, let's, uh, it's not working. It's interesting. Ah, okay. Yeah, on a high level, LRS and uh, FME and all the requirements, let's uh, take a look at that. So at the center line, and maintenance, you have the uh, interactive editing. And this is something FME at current, uh, I would say yes and no, because FME is not an interactive tool. It's a data ETL tool, essentially. However, the reason I say yes, because nowadays we can use FME to push services. So web editing, interactive editing is actually is possible. You can, once API is exposed, you could write your front end to, engage with it. Then uh, data in, uh, import export and ETL, those are all the strength of FME. And look at LRS operations, you know, route building, calibration. Yes, we can actually do that. It's, um, it's kind of uh, not, not very intuitive, but we can do it. In fact, yesterday I attended a hackathon. The second project they posted was the uh, LRS calibration. Uh, event, uh, events QC and analysis, yes, and we, we will show uh, some of that today. And on the data sharing, of course, and um, with the server in particular, where would you do that? So these are kind of like LRS requirements overall in terms of scale, uh, the different categories and uh, its scope of support that is needed for professional. Okay, uh, let's look at the common LRS operations on the, on the roof side. So, okay. You will have, on the maintenance side, you will have the route building, 
Okay, we need to build route from center lines, let's say. And we will need a route calibrator so we can control the measurements. We also have a reference generator, which later I have another slide showing what that is. And the other thing is the, uh, the QC. You know, the route, you can have many, many issues in there. And it's uh, center line and the route itself. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to talk too much detail in that. This is a slide showing that we can, the need and the usage of a route reference. Essentially, you have center line, you have a route system of this rolling network with different boundaries, and having a transformer is able to generate that reference dynamically on the fly so that you can make uh, essentially a, uh, you know, a reference mark offset type of referencing system, which is uh, quite useful. In fact, in many, many governments and state governments using this scheme, using this methodology. So uh, in the past few uh, years, uh, Dave Campanas and SAVE, they put up a few slides talking about its LRS capabilities. And I borrowed three uh, from here, and you can find those slides as well. Essentially. These three slides are focusing on the tools, specific tools available for the route. In other, other words, it's infrastructure management. You have route side infrastructure man management. And um, data joiner, merger, inline courier, ex SQL executor, essentially some of which is quite generic. More specific would be path splitter and path builder and the, the uh, measure setter, things of that nature. So. Um, we should be able to find additional information on that, okay, a certain data cleansing tool. This is also from SAFE. And so common LRS events, that's what I'm gonna focus on. Uh, I have how many more minutes? Okay, yeah, so uh, LRS common operation, I will talk about events, and geocoding is one of the things on events. So when I'm talking about events, we're talking about this no geometry. It's only the description of geometry existing. You say, on this railroad track from milepost, you know, such and such to such and such, we have certain type of whatever condition. So it's the description, S similar like the address. We're seeing on this route at this measurement, at, at this address location. So that's why we have the geocoding and ge uh, reverse geocoder. So we need that to have that cap capacity, capability. And analysis, we like to do density analysis and event sum summary analysis. And on the operation, we always need to do join a Y because again, the separation of layers, multiple layers being separate, but human beings would like to collapse them together to have a homogeneous segments. So yeah, think about it. And, that is, in fact, very fundamental operation for event. So that's a joiner. The reason I joiner over, over layer, I think joiner provide a much uh, a richer semantics, especially you can use left joining and right joining, auto joining, to expand the joins that uh, only have one set of data, you know, the others, uh, without, okay? And feature area, oh, no, I'm not going to, yeah. Then feature area overlay and something. And on the maintenance side, we want to measure propagator, measurements change. We like to have an easy way to propagate all the events down the stream to do that. We, of course, would like to have merger should the two adjacent segments, event segments, having identical attribute. We want to reduce it to merger. Then, of course, we always have event QC. And speaking of event QC, and this is a um, uh, event QC diagram. You see, you have a route. Of course, in, uh, in transportation, you have a route can be discontiguous because you have a roadway come to that end and pick up later. That happens quite often the time, always. Then you have the uh, linear layer. Let's say you have the point layer. So just different rules, domain rules violation, and gap rules, and overlap. And some of which is 
is optional, some of which is mandatory. Like domain rule, I would say always being mandatory. It's so easy, you can say, hey, I have a crash happened on this road at this measurement, but the entire route ends at, you know, before that particular measurement, because, you know, uh, so that the QC uh, need to have a way to identify that. And some of the operations that we have uh, done, you know, the QCR and joiner overlay, um, the analysis, you have this, which I kind of talked about it earlier. And the FME transformers for these operations that I found very useful are this point online overlay, point on area overlayer, and you can see clipper, measure extractor, snipper, neighbor finder and statistic calculator. These are the ones uh, fundamentally behind the custom transformers that we have uh, developed and um, we're sharing here. And let's look at, you will ask, hey, uh, these look like all geometric operation, but you just said events are essentially text-based. How can we use geometric engine to process essentially text-based information? Okay, so let's take a look. <laughs> so typical events. So this one essentially creates string line, string line feature from events. Typical events will have a unique ID for each event. You have broad ID from measure to measure. Okay, from measure to measure could be degenerated as into identical being a point event. So the key is to generate a straight line geometry. Because only when you generate a straight line geometry before you can use FME's engine to treat them as a spatial object to, to do that. So th that's one of the fundamental tricks uh, I'm talking about. And how to do that? And this is one of the, um, uh, this one where we're essentially doing it. I, I, I couldn't really see from here, but the, you are, uh, you have the geom I think first one is the geometry remover, essentially making sure that uh, we do not want to have any geometry carry into, sometimes the, uh, the uh, event also carries its own geometry, which we don't need it, because that geometry could have many vertices, because we only want to abstract that into a string line. That way, the performance will be much, much better, much faster, okay. And uh, then you have the uh, you know, validator and the remove some uh, ARM for attribute remover. Then you test whether it's uh, validated. Then over here, this one, uh, those VCs is for vertex creation. So use vertex creation, then you make that a geometry. Once that's geometry, you can use all those uh, spatial tools to do your thing. So that, that's the, uh, the quick trip. And I only have two minutes here. I'm, I'm going to show a real quick uh, on our YouTube channel. And uh, we should have, I, yeah, let's, let's see if this will work. We don't have the sound. But here, uh, there's a quite a few of that. And uh, I couldn't see this very well. But uh, so uh, event, is this is the event QC or what? Yeah, we have the event QC or event uh, uh, manager. Uh, this is a, s a summarizer. So I think this is only less than two minutes long anyway, so. So summarizer essentially keeping one layer steady and summarizing the other particular, right now is one layer, and summarizing it in terms of the maximum, minimum, and uh, predominant values and what have you. So, uh, so leading to that transformer, then you identify the uh, key columns in your, in the two features. Then you uh, specify uh, your output. <coughs>
Yes, so uh, it's basically the, um, um, we have developed a, a series of LRS uh, tools for that purpose. And uh, so as a summary, if I can switch back, is this one the most speedy one? Yeah, as a summary, LRS is more complex than it, appear, it appears to be. And FME has the ingredients to support LS operation. The key to event operation is to build the string line features from that event. So uh, I think my time is up and time for question. You mentioned about, um, I forget the name of the, of the transformer, but um, updating the measure somehow if it was a different unit or, uh, can you just describe how that works? I think uh, the, you may be talking about uh, referring to the measure propagator. Yeah, so downstream change into, but in your case, in fact, you might have one LRS, however you have multiple LRMs, different measurements. Some is station-based, some reference-based, some using different units. So those, I would treat them as a different LRM sits on top of the same uh, LRS infrastructure. So there's a translation need to be done. So in the case of Kansas DOT, uh, they have, they actually have had, uh, they have two LRS systems, but in addition to mile point, uh, they also have stationing using the engineering station with offset. But th the key thing is tie that have lookup table essentially tie that to the fundamental base system, which is mile point system anyway, yeah. In the state of Arizona, what they do, they use a router reference system. Say, say on this highway from this cross street, offset so much to another cross street, everything's like that, because that's more human readable. Human can understand it. And also that they, they sh you're, pro you're protected from the uh, underlying shift of sand, so to speak. Because the intersections, they are essentially a more stable object, even though the measure could change. So that they do not need to do measure propagation as most other DOT, they're struggling with it. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question. We, we can talk offline more on that, for sure, yeah. So do you, or I guess do you, um is your sort of, you obviously have custom transformers, correct? Yes. That you build and maintain. Are those for, um, like, do you do much with like the Esri roads and highways? Is that mainly what they're built on? Uh, this custom transform is entirely FME based. But as we are, uh, as a company, we're doing some consulting. We, we do help uh, with DOT, with roads and highway integration and implementation like that, yeah. But this, uh, things completely built on top of uh, uh, FME product, you know, uh, platform, yeah. Thank you both. So there might be time for one more question if anyone has a burning question. Yes. Okay, one short last question. Hi, um, are you using FME more to create the LRS and the infrastructure or are you using it also for some sort of analysis or producing uh, maps or tables to show the results? In the LRS uh, practice, we do use them both. The custom transformer covers both the uh, infrastructure portion, which is our, uh, the route portion of the capability, such as calibration of route, uh, building of route system, right, and uh, a few other things. Then one of the other th things today I focused on was on the event side of it. Yeah, so we have the, uh, yeah, on the event side of, uh, does analysis. I think it, the answer to your question is yes, FM is capable of doing both. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, both.